and welcome back to Hoopin Espresso. Today we're going to be talking about three customs in one video, um, mainly because I thought two of the customs couldn't really justify the full like showcase and um, sort of like tutorial treatment as the other main figure which is here. Um, mainly one because I didn't actually take that many pictures of the um, this figure, I could maybe have done, but um, I didn't really take that many pictures of it while I was making it so it's just been thrown in here. They all three of these figure figures slash figurines feature in the same story at some point. This one mainly features in the following story, but does appear briefly at the end. And this one is also quite a prominent feature in the story, which is of course the arc in space. Um, the season twelve, the second story, of season twelve, starring Tom Baker for the first time as the Doctor. Well, it was his second story, but it was first season. Is what I remember that, but yeah. <clears throat> But I'm going to be mainly talking about this figure, but before I do, I just want to have a quick look at some of these other figures that I have made here that are just sort of customs sort of hanging about here. So this is a custom classic Sarah Jane Smith from uh, the Sontaran experiment mainly, but she does appear right at the end of the arc in space, as I mentioned earlier. Um, this is her in her yellow waterproofs, um, because in the story of the Sontaran experiment, they end up going to this sort of abandoned earth a bit like orphan 55 in the sense that it's post sort of nuclear war-esque time and a bit like the hundred or the mysterious planet that kind of same story escape so there there wasn't really there was a lot of wet weather at the time and it was filmed at Dartmoor so I don't really blame them for having this kind of costume but as you can see I've tried to get some details of sort of buttons and the uh, sort of the bits of string that sort of coil down from the bottom from the holes in the top of the hood which is also painted white, like the interior of the coat was. Um, this was an Invasion of the Bane Sarah Jane figure, which I actually had um, to hand. Um, a lot of my figures, I'm ashamed to say, have not stood the test of time because I got them very young. I mean, a lot younger than a lot of people collected Doctor Who stuff, I think. It's quite interesting. I collected um, stuff from very young, like mainly because my older sibling also collected Doctor Who stuff, so I inherited a lot of that stuff as well. So this is a Sarah Jane figure from Invasion of the Bane, which didn't have a hair. It was, the arm was sort of falling a bit off here. So I thought I could try and customise it to make it a classic Sarah Jane, because I do have another new series Sarah Jane. So I thought I'd try and have a go at this. I've also, so here I've had to paint in a completely new paint sculpt, which was not very good, I have to say. But I tried my best with it. I've, I think it kind of helps that in the story it was very wet, so you can always blame it on the weather. I've also, ha um, thankfully, I also chose the one with a beanie hat, which is much easier to sculpt. I think I've done that quite well, to be honest. Um, I think the beanie hat is probably the best thing here. Um, I've also, thankfully, a lot most of the Sarah Jane figures already are wearing boots, so I've been able to uh, paint, basically, over these boots to get the sort of yellow, um, I guess, semi-Wellingtons? I don't know what you call them. I know my sister used to own a pair of them when she was little. Um, she's also got some nice pet black gloves, which sort of look more like the... Uh, I haven't been able to get the best out of these because they're sort of woolen gloves, but these sort of like surgical or sort of dodgy tattoo-esque gloves. I mean, you know, the kind of gloves that people who make tattoos or, or draw tattoos, I guess, uh, wear when they're doing that. But I've also managed to... I've noticed she had a grey jumper on. Uh, that I've tried to paint that there to get that kind of detail there. It does look a bit odd because the actual face sculpt <laughs> looks um, looks a lot older than the rest of her is supposed to look. So if you look at episodes from the story, it does look a bit off. Um, I think mainly because I just basically got the figure and covered it in milliput because I realised it would be the easiest way to do the costume. That's why I chose to do this costume, because it's easier to get away with, because it's already very puffy, filled with air, so you can get away with it looking at slightly, like, a bit odd. And it was my first custom on an actual base of a figure, so for that, I'm quite pleased. And actually, this is the first time I stood up without having to have support, so I'm very happy about that as well. Um, before we move on to the main... Um, Wurren creature. Here we have a Wurren larvae, uh, which I painted actually and made first. Um, this is entirely sculpted out of milliput. Um, yeah, so you got the mouth. I decided to go with a mouth that was sort of open, so you could have a similar thing to when I did my maggots. I could paint the inside red there to make it look like it was sort of vicious or, or like it was going to sort of bite you. But also, I didn't have to paint the entire thing because 
the uh, the shadows sort of do a lot of the work for you, so you won't be able to see down it, particularly if you do a dig enough a bigger hole. And we also have some suckers here, because there's also suckers. I know that suckers down the entire body. And if I'm honest, I wish I had been done that, because here, at the top of the tail where I painted it green, I wasn't able to cover that, no matter how many layers I put over it, which was kind of annoying. But, yeah, I suppose it might have been fixed. I just wish I'd not, no, I was going to paint it pink before I started to paint the top of the tail, really, so that's more on me than anything else. Um, the actual creature itself is actually made of bubble wrap, which is, surprisingly, it was quite new at the time. I think I've done quite a nice job of sort of blending, I don't know if I can get it to focus, blending the green and the pink together there. I'm quite happy with that, the way that it sort of merges those different colours. And obviously here we have the bubble wrap lines. It was very easy to do because I had very, a lot of experience doing these sort of maggoty type creatures when I was making my uh, maggots if I was just to go get one give it a sec. Here is a maggot I made from the green death here um as you can see there's sort of very similar shapes this one's a lot fatter but I didn't get I was unfortunate in the fact that I started collecting classic Doctor Who figures a lot later than others and one of the few things that I really wanted for my classic Doctor Who action figure collection was a giant maggot so I've sort of done something very similar here where you've got the lines sort of the coils you've got the pink paint trying to replicate that sort of maggoty creature. I punctured this with my sculpting knife to make the holes in there. It is a bit odd because bubble wrap is obviously more 3D. This looks like it's going in. <laughs> it's more of an inny than an outy, if you know what I mean. Um, I think there could be some better paint apps improved here, particularly over here. Lots of different tones that I think I probably should have kept one constant colour. But yeah, that is the uh, We're in Larvae and a brief look at one of my maggot customs that I made last year. Just when I got my, got a couple of packets of maple put and just made some maggots basically, along with my patine. But let's talk about the main feature here. Let's move Sarah over there. She's probably never going to stand again. Oh, no, she is. She's standing. Okay, let's get them off camera and have a look at this. This is the main creature of the video, the main custom. This is the Wurren from the Ark in Space. I actually, when I was sculpting this, I think it, I thought it was going to turn out really horribly. And I still kind of, this, this side of the uh, face sort of still bugs me. But I think with the paint, I think particularly because I was able to get the colours quite well, I think I think it definitely looks better in, in, in like, looking at it on the camera and then looking up at it. It definitely looks better in real life than it does on camera. So, I mean, I know it was never going to be as good because it's still, it's still very early in my custom making sort of, I guess, not really a career because I'm never going to make a career out of this, but sort of in my custom making experience, I think it's still quite good um, for me. But if you look at it, the bait, I did this again because I could use a similar sort of base to my Yeti custom that I made. Um... About the same time I've used a toilet roll base and filled that with polystyrene and taped it off to sort of give it a more solid feel to it rather than just being very hollow but so it gives it more of a figurine status than a figure I guess in a way. But I used the same sort of method there and then I basically sculpted onto it with milliput which we'll get to in the sort of making of bit in a minute but I was managed to get I was quite happy with the paint application because I really think I was able to get the paint application on point here you've got the tail there which I had to make bigger than when I originally did it there's the bottom unpainted just that's what dried milliput looks like there um, I'm surprised the main thing I'm mostly happy about is that these tentacles didn't snap well when one of them did like, it's not that noticeable, I don't think, actually. I, in fact, like, I forgot about it since it all, really. But I think the antenna is the most impressive thing I was able to sculpt. Oh, sorry. <laughs> let's hope, let's not um, say, uh, speak and tempt fate, I suppose. But I'm surprised that they didn't, like, break off yet by yet, by the way, I think. Um, yeah, I'm just glad that they haven't. So, some of them are wonky, but I kind of still think they kind of work. I still think it's sort of very imposing on the shelf next to my Tom Baker figure. And as I said, I'm just really happy that I got managed to get the right paint colours. I think the paint really brings this thing to life. It looked really awful before it was painted, I think. So yeah, let's get into how I made this figure. So here we have a couple of photographs that I took whilst I was making it. Here is the start of the figurine. And this is what I mean by I had to make the tail a lot bigger because at first I just basically had the ends of a milliput pack after I made my yeti so I was a bit like what do I do with this I don't want it to dry out I've already like made it like 
with Mulliput, like, once you've fused it together, you've only got it until it dries out. Like, I don't think you can put it in a bag and protect it from getting dry like clay, but I'm not sure about that. I might have to look that up at some point. But, yeah, I basically just added that onto the end of a loo roll until I got some more Milliput. It was about a week later that I was actually able to finish this. But that's the, the original tail. That's what it used to look like before I added loads of Milliput on. Towards the end, I don't think I took a picture of it before it got... I mean, I mean after it got expanded I guess I don't know but basically I, it had to become a lot bigger otherwise the figure just kept on falling over and over I'm quite happy with the fact that it doesn't just keep falling over and over because a lot of the figures I've had they just keep falling over like Sarah Jane did but in this video it's been a miracle that she's been able to stand out without having to um, be on someone like relying on someone for balance I guess but yeah that is what the original tail looked like on the loo roll base as I mentioned before so here, as you can see, I've sculpted the main body onto the Lural base. <clears throat> here we have, um, I basically got some Milliput coils. I wanted to have all sorts of different shapes here because I didn't think that the wear end would have sort of symmetrical shapes. So I wanted it to feel organic. And this is the bit where I got, uh, where I started to freak out that I didn't think it was going to work because the face sculpt looks awful. It really does. Um... I really don't like the way it looked before I painted it. I still don't really like the way it looked even with paint on, but I think it works better with paint. So I did freak out a little bit because I don't think the face sculpt worked as well as I thought it was going to. And I just, but yeah, I, I basically just sculpted that out of Milliput and put that onto the new roll base. I then covered that with another section of Milliput to make the sort of base of the body. And then I added a little bit on the top with um, a sort of a little, little tuft, I guess, a sort of secondary head or something I don't know um there's just sort of this sort of bit on the top and I basically just sculpted that basically pinch pot on a milliput and then filled that with polystyrene to make the sort of bit there and again I didn't want it to sink in or anything so I filled that with polystyrene but yeah so those are the insect legs I guess and the antennae and this is I've, I've tried to make them even and I really did try to try and get them to be all the same size but and I do think they're somewhat the same size but I don't think it really worked because some of them are taller and some of them are shorter. I think it kind of works because they're going down anyway, so they would look longer as they went down anyway. And let's face it, the prop itself wasn't going to probably have all equal anyway. So, and it is a creature, as I said. I mean, I mean, realistically, our legs aren't all the same size. I mean, if we actually measured each leg, you'd probably find that even our legs aren't equal, so... Yeah, you win some, you lose some. Uh, but yeah, that's the uh, legs there, sort of drying out. I sculpted them. They're basically just... I basically sculpted the top bit and then I, I sort of tried to roll in a second sort of folded bit to try and... So without them snapping, I guess. I didn't... I just... I, they're two separate pieces and then moulded together, which sometimes worked. I, I really took a long time to find the right thickness here. Um... You don't want them to be too thin, otherwise they were just going to snap. But I think I found a good balance, so I'm quite happy with that. And the antennae I had to curl separately as well. So yeah, those are the antennae and the sort of legs. So this is the finished wherein with all the legs fully dried off and the legs and antennae stuck in just before painting. And as you can see, I was painting this at the same time as Sarah Jane, because there's Sarah Jane in the background just leaning on some books, um, drying out there. Um, as you can see, there's some yellow paint on it. Um, I got it on top by accident, but yeah, but that is basically what it looked like before I painted it. And you can, I think, I think it came together when I added the antennae and the feet as well, because it did look just a bit odd without any legs. So, I mean, if you are going to try and make this, just be aware of that because it will look a bit weird until it's finished, I think. Um, yeah, so that is the basically before paint, and then you'll see there is a remarkable improvement, I think, after paint. Like, I mean, it still looks pretty awful, in my opinion, because I'm never going to be as good as the legendary Doctor Who customers as, like, Jimmy Pie. I can't remember what his full name is now. <coughs> and Joseph Cook on Instagram? He's, he's does some great customs as well. I definitely follow him on Instagram. But yeah, that, that is the before paint. And then finally, here it is with a lick of paint. And I really, really, like, as a custom, I think I would prefer this over the Yeti. I, I think this actually, as a representation of the prop, it looks a lot better. I was actually trying to do a representation of the um, the figurine collection version, which is more creature-like in itself. I don't think that's entirely accurate to the prop. I think this actually might be, in a way, 
more accurate because they've sort of made it look like they've added the tail where I'm pretty sure in the episode you can't actually see the tail I don't think the prop was like that at all I think they've definitely got a lot of the upper body more accurate but as a like an actual like design like in terms of like the bot the way the body like is structured I think this is more accurate because there was no way they would have gotten a man in the costume that they've done for the figurine collection it's just to, like the but you wouldn't be able to get people's feet in I know it's a costume I know it's not like a prop or anything uh, or a puppet I don't think it is a puppet at the very least so in that terms I think it's quite good I mean if I was to do this again I definitely want to try and get the face sculpt right. I think the face sculpt is the thing that bugs me the most. I think I'm really quite impressive with, impressed with the fact that the legs didn't snap, as I keep mentioning. Um, I really like the paint application. I think I was very fortunate in the fact that I had lots of different tones to work with, lots of different colours. And the fact that I was watching the story at the same time meant that I had a moving reference picture. So I was able to, whilst watching it, pinpoint different bits of like angles that I wouldn't be if I was just looking at a single still photo at the time. So I'm quite happy with it. I'd love to know what your thoughts on this custom are um, and all the other customs that I did that I showcased in this video include the Sarah Jane custom. I would like to try and reattempt these kind of these customs in like a few years if I get good at the like better at these customs. So yeah it'd be fun to look back at these um in these customs in the future and I'd love to do more customs on an action figure base. Like I looked at again shout out to Joe Cook again he started um he did a Donna Noble from Journey's End. I've seen lots of people do them and they always look fantastic. And I've always wanted a uh, Donna Noble with straight hair because like, I know that the curly hair, uh, I think the curly hair action figure from Planet of the U does look pretty good and it's very good and very accurate to the story. And it's just good, good, accurate. But like, I feel like it's not what I associate her character with. I associate her character with the straight hair, the the jumpsuit the, I mean the the pant I don't know what how would you describe what she wears in partners in crime uh, I associate it with that or her journey's end look I don't really associate it with planet of the Ood personally so I really loved the the costumes from that so that would be something that I'd love to try at some point unfortunately I don't have a spare Don Noble figure or a Tashika I don't even own a Tashika figure so that would be a while off before I even attempt that but I think that would definitely be another figure that I'd love to try but yeah, um, I've got another, I think I've got another figure, custom figure from my last batch of figures left to go. So have a look out for that. I'm sure if you've been following me on Instagram, you might be able to guess what that figure might be. Or indeed on Twitter. Yes, I posted a picture of it on Twitter. Um, so yeah, that'll probably be, unless something else happens in between now and next week, what my next video will be. But yeah, um, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, like if you liked it. Comment, let me know what your thoughts on this custom are. Uh, let me know if you're trying any customs yourself, what customs you're trying. Be interesting to hear ideas and like what everyone else is doing. And yeah, subscribe if you want to get updates on upcoming content and reviews down below. Thank you for watching.